The members of the Constituent Assembly wanted India to be a welfare state where citizens are guaranteed a healthy standard of living, equal opportunities, full employment and fair distribution of wealth. However, it was not possible at that time in 1949. So therefore, they laid down certain guidelines for all the future governments for the welfare of the people. These guidelines in the constitution are known as directive principles of state policy. They are classified into three categories, principles that promote economic equality, Gandhian principles and general principles. Let us look at the first one, principles promoting economic equality. The governments are suggested to make and enact laws to ensure the following rights for the citizens of India, like fair and equitable distribution of wealth and material resources of the country, the resources of the country should be used for the common good of all, adequate means of livelihood for all the citizens, equal pay for equal work for both men and women, the right to work so that there is no unemployment problem in the country and assistance to old, sick and disabled people, a decent standard of living and leisure for all, protection of children and youth against exploitation. So these were the principles that are put under the first category which the governments have been suggested to incorporate for the welfare of the people. During the freedom movement, Mahatma Gandhi had worked out a plan for social development. Some of his ideas were included as directive principles. His suggestions were to provide free and compulsory education for all children up to the age of 14, promote cottage industries and villages, prohibit slaughter of cows and cattle and modernize agriculture, promote the educational and economic interests of the scheduled caste, scheduled tribes and other weaker sections of the society, improve the level of nutrition and general health of the people, prevent consumption of liquor and other harmful drugs and also establish village panchayats. The third category of general principles include directives regarding matters of justice, environment, monuments and foreign policies. Some of the directives included are um, promote international peace and security, maintain just and honorable relation with other countries, protect and improve the environment and safeguard forests and wildlife, and also protect national monuments, places and objects of national importance. Next we come to the similarities and differences between fundamental rights and directive principles. Fundamental rights and directive principles both protect the rights of the citizens and ensure the social, economic and political progress of the nation. However, the difference is that fundamental rights are enforceable by law which means that if a person is denied his or her fundamental right, that person can move to the court and demand justice. However, that is not the case with uh, the directive principles. They are not uh, non-justifiable. That is that if any of the directive principles are not given to you, you cannot go to the court to ask for justice. Next, many governments over the years have tried their best to implement some of the directive principles. Let us look at some of them. The first one, the right to free and compulsory education for all children between 6 to 14 years has been established. Number two, welfare schemes for scheduled castes and scheduled tribes is also being implemented by centre and state governments. A law has been passed guaranteeing equal pay for both men and women and also laws have been passed to distribute land among the poor landless farmers. So we can say that much has been achieved but still it's a long way for India to become a welfare state. For more such informative videos, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel.